midterms and election meddling is a top concern on both sides of the aisle. Well, in a few hours from now, top Trump administration officials will lay out a new strategy for combating cyber threats to our nation. Here to shed some light on those threats and ways to stop them is attorney and data cybersecurity expert Lisa Garber. Great to have you here, Lisa. Um, you study this stuff. What is the main threat or threats facing the U.S.? The threats are coming in, and they've been coming in for the past couple of years. Russia, China, Iran, North Korea have all been probing our systems. And it's not just our election systems. It's also our water, electric grid, power supply, all of those things. But the top threat would, make, would be to make Americans have less faith in our electoral system. Undermine the democratic process. Exactly. Uh, DHS having a big meeting today. Let's show right now the new initiatives that they plan to do over the next 90 days. And in my estimation, they're full of a lot of jargon, a lot of tech speak. I want you to tell us exactly what they are going to be doing first. And then is that what they need to be doing? Yes. Well, DHS has been on top of this. They want to be the primary voice in terms of cybersecurity in the United States, especially regarding the election process. What they're trying to do right now is gain a little more federal control over what the states are doing in terms of their election systems. Because the problem is right now it looks like a patchwork. Every state, every county actually has its own way, whether it's a paper ballot, whether it's an online system connected to the Internet or just a digitized system. The Department of Homeland Security is really trying to unite all of these and implement implement higher, secure, better ways of taking these election counts. Because paper is both good and bad. You can't hack paper, but paper also leads to a lot of confusion, missing records, things paper, along those lines. Paper isn't the only way forward, and at this point, it's really going to be impossible. You think about the Internet of Things, everything connected to the Internet. This is the way of the future, and the Department of Homeland Security recognizes that they have to move forward. But are these recommendations going to be able to be implemented by the midterms? I mean, the midterms are like a few days away for all intents and purposes. There have been some hints that this has been worked on for a couple of months now, but this is a huge, really spanning process, and it's been going on for some years, but they really have to get in place different measures to really unite these systems. I'm trying to think of the poll worker who has to implement these, and I think of my late grandmother, little sweet little old Italian lady, uh, going to the polls, making sure everything works. If she was in the computer age, she would have no idea what she's doing. Do the poll workers in all 50 states who, by and large, are these retirees like my grandmother, uh, do they have the wherewithal to be able to handle these issues? The poll workers are going to have to understand not necessarily how these systems work. They're not going to be implementing these systems, but to explain to users, here are the buttons you have to push, and this is what will happen. What, what the government is really worried about is that there's going to be some sort of malware attack that's going to come up and make all of this noise. Maybe screens will go red and people will start getting nervous about how to use these systems. But poll workers can really keep that under control and try to implement these systems in the easiest way possible. So at the end of the day, your biggest concern is not vote changing, but democracy undermining. Exactly. Votes haven't been changed. That's not the issue at this point. The issues have been whether foreign nationals have seen these actual voter databases, and they have in Illinois and Arizona dating back to 2016, which is still problematic. It's a data breach. People are seeing this data that shouldn't be seeing it, and that also undermines security. But there's also a question of whether voters are still going to go out to the polls if there are security issues. Lisa, great insight. We really do appreciate it. I'm sure we'll be checking back in with you a lot over the course of the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Thanks so much.